Hey everyone, how's it going? Thanks for joining me again. Welcome back to the channel. So as promised, I wasn't going to be so long doing the next update, so that's why I'm back so soon. Hopefully this video goes ahead without any hitches, but we'll see. So as I mentioned before, I've had a lot of new material coming in, so this is a collection update with some more CDs that I received recently. Um, this video has a black metal theme, so all four releases I'm talking about are black, the black metal genre, mostly Hellenic Greek black metal, but also one other release from another country. So that's just to give you an indication, and we'll get started. So, just a moment. Okay, the first album I picked up, this is Medieval Demon with Demonolatria. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. Demonolatria, yeah. So. You've probably heard me talk about this band before. I've got a couple of other releases. These are the releases I had spoken about previously. So um, I'll link up my previous videos to these albums so you can see my descriptions. And I've just made some new additions. So yeah, this one. Uh, as I've mentioned before, Medieval Demon are a Greek or Hellenic black metal band, if you weren't familiar. And they've actually, they were around in the early to mid 90s and then they broke up for a prolonged period and recently did a reunion where they released some new albums. But um, I, you've probably heard me rave about this band before if you've been watching my channel for a while. But basically, yes, they're a Greek band and the way I would describe this is gothic melodic black metal. So I just want to qualify that statement for a moment because one reviewer I've heard, I saw one reviewer on Metal Archives actually compared this band to Cradle of Filth and Dimu Borgia, but I think that's really not that accurate, to be honest, and um, to be completely fair. Um, this band, yes, it's melodic, it's got a gothic theme, but it's a lot rawer. So um, I would say it's a lot rawer than those aforementioned bands, and there's less keyboards. The band that they remind me of actually a lot is um, Kastrum, the quality Croatian black metal band, which is, also has a vampiric theme. So. Um, yeah, the way I would describe this, yes, it's vampiric, gothic, black metal, but not as over the top as some of those other bands. It's more in the line of just raw Greek black metal. So we'll get onto that more in a moment. Um, so if, to give you a general description of their sound, it sort of creates a hammer horror haunting atmosphere. Um, think of themes like darkness, moonlight, candles, castles, landscapes, cemeteries, forests, and midnight rituals. That's what Medieval Demon is all about. Fantastic atmosphere and theme. Um, also, they do use a lot of not only keyboards, but actual organs. And um, again, I heard one reviewer describe that as hammy or cheesy, something like that. On the contrary, I really like it. So it depends on what you like. But if you like this kind of traditional ghastly horror atmosphere, then you will probably like this band too. Excuse me. All right, so this album, Demonolatria, this one was released when they, the band first started. So around 1995, I think. Now, to sum this album up, it's just riffy as hell. It sounds very Greek, especially with some of the guitar melodies, but it also has something which is completely unique, original, and dark. Like, um, this band really do have their own sound, while uh, drawing elements from vampiric black metal and Hellenic black metal. So, um, the drums with this band and on this album, with all the shifts in time, they really kick the riffs off and let them sink in, and the vocals are excellent, possessed, raspy, and powerful. And there are also some low guttural growls and chants. So um, with this particular album, a lot of the songs were featured on this compilation, which is Necrotic Rituals from the Unholy Past. So um, I will link up my description of this album. But um, yeah, this one has some of those songs, but also some additional ones. Um, in a nutshell, this album is brilliant. I don't dislike any of the songs. The first track, which is the intro, which is called Under the Twilight, that's got an Opus Nocturna styled uh, organ intros, you know, the intro from um, Marduk's no Opus Nocturna album, so if you like that, you'll like this too. Um, then track two, which is called Dark Widow, um, that has got this sick, hypnotic, mesmerizing riff. It's very Hellenic sounding, and then a, a somber outro, a somber outro, like some of the riffs on this album are absolutely brilliant, simply amazing. Um, then track three, you've got a dark ambient intro. Track four, I'm not going to read all the titles. Uh, that's, yeah, uh, Queen of Sorrow, that was on the compilation. That's a very Castromesque song, like consisting of some haunting violins. So sometimes it's not black metal, they do um, instrumentals with some classical moments, that kind of thing. Uh, now track five, which is called Spirit of the Dead, that's got an atmos atmospheric, dreamy, majestic keyboard in intro. And um, it makes me picture a fantasy world of just white, 
castles made of ice. You know, imagine a land of ice, something like that. So it conjures very powerful images in the mind. And it also has, um, that song uh, has some emperor imitating riffs. You know, like the intro from uh, In the Night Side Eclipse, that sort of, those low three notes, like they have some riffs in that song which uh, imitate that particular sound. So that's fantastic too. Uh, then track six, which is called Demonolatria, the title track. That is really evil sounding riffs with possessed guttural growls along with the standard raspy vocals, so fantastic. Track nine, which is called something. Uh, uh, yeah, that's a majestic and triumphant sounding synth track. It's hugely epic. It just keeps building with so many riffs and it is a very big epic track. Bombastic and furious and again, raspy vocals, which is fantastic. And then track 10, which is called the Rise of the Moon, possibly my favorite track on the album. That's got some sick hypnotic mid-pace riffs and some melodic licks uh, backed by synths. This is followed by a dreamy spacey section and somber reflective synth soundscapes. Then it suddenly bursts back into some fast aggressive drums with some blast beats and more mid-pace hypnotic sick riffs. So absolutely fantastic. And then track 11, which closes, no, not, not quite closing the album. Um, yeah, that is an evil sounding dark ambient track. Then track 12, that's got some amazing upbeat mid-paced riffs and melodies, which is extremely catchy. And then track 13, which closes the album. That's a somber outro starting with some synths followed by some really melancholic, but and also sad sounding violins and violas. Um, it's, but it has an almost Celtic sound in the melody as well. And this is all to the backdrop of waves crashing on the shore. So very atmospheric. It paints a lot of powerful pictures in the mind. And um, yeah, you can probably see that I like this album a lot. Like I've gone into a bit of detail. I didn't want to waste time with the song titles or all of them anyway. But in a nutshell, this album contains some of the best riffs I've heard in years of all time, I would say. And remember this album came out in 1995. Just the riffs on this album are so hypnotic, infectious and incredibly catchy, very Hellenic sounding, but also having a sound of their own. And um, there are a lot of breakdowns and groovy, groovy moments on this album where you're air drumming along or tapping your head, at least I am, but absolutely fantastic. So I'll just show you the front cover here, which is pretty cool. And this band usually doesn't disappoint with the artwork and layout. Yep, so very traditional black metal kind of image. Yeah. And also here's the disc. So there you go. Yep, so absolutely fantastic band and album. If you haven't checked this band out or this album, I implore you to do so because it's absolutely brilliant. Dark, original, and very hypnotic. That's Medieval Demon with Demonolatria. All right. Okay, up next, I also picked up another album by this band. Sorry, the cover is broken. Yep. This is Medieval Demon with Arcadian Witchcraft. So first of all, you can see that this cover art is very obscure. It's like some witches looking over a cauldron in the candlelight. Cool concept and atmosphere, but I don't know why they use such faint colors, I guess to make it obscure, but you can't really see shit. I mean, it's not, not too bad, but have a look at this back cover, the song titles, it's fucking unreadable. But um, yeah, ne never mind the artwork. Let's, it's ultimately the music counts that counts, so let's get on to that. So, Arcadian Witchcraft, this is one that, that has been released since their reunion a few years ago. So, remember this other one I raved about. This one came out recently, uh, Medieval Necromancy. Brilliant. This is the one that followed it up, Arcadian Witchcraft. So, um, yeah, this band still fails to disappoint. Like, they're an absolutely brilliant original band, and I love this album too. Um, so this one, it's pretty much in the same vein as the other albums that I've described, so you know what to expect, but at the same time, they always have some fresh and new ideas to keep you interested. So um, unfortunately, I can't read the titles, guys, because the, the script is too faint, but um, just to give you some impression of this album, track one um, has an explosive, bombastic, chaotic start, but once it settles, it's got an amazing mid paced catchy riff backed by keyboards, which sound really majestic. Um, this is then followed by a spacey psychedelic guitar solo in the middle, followed by some dark riffs with clattery blast beats and more dark sounding keyboards. So, wow, what an opening track. Track two, another one of my favorite tracks. This is explosive and fast with more melodic and haunting keyboards. Again, the riff is catchy though, and then it slows down with some clean guitars in some parts. This, that second song is chock-a-block full of um, 
amazing riffs, catchy riffs, usually accompanied by keyboards, but never drowned out by them. And this is just a perfect blend. And they also use some pianos on some occasion. Yeah, so that's the difference. This band has kind of got a gothic theme, but it's not as um, synth oriented as bands like he Hecate and Throned or Cradle of Filth. So that's why I think it's a bit inaccurate to compare them to those bands. It's more like the Croatian band Castrum, as I said, yet more Hellenic sounding. Yeah, so um, track four, this is another really highlight track for me. It has a synth riff, which must be a tribute to Rotting Christ's non servium. So again, they do retain that Hellenic Greek sound despite sounding original, which is really cool. And then track six is another synth track consisting of some amazing atmospheric synths. So I'm not going to go into every nuance and detail of this album, but basically it's more of the brilliant same thing that was featured on those other albums. Um, this one, I don't like it as much as Demonolatria or probably not as much as Medieval Necromancy either, but with this band, they've never released a bad album. So this is still a bloody brilliant album featuring some great tracks. It's, there's so many twists and turns and amazing moments on this album. You really just have to go and listen to it. I've just given you an outline of some of my favorite tracks, but again, fantastic. They never disappoint. So um, just showing you the cover art here. And again, cool concept, but yeah, the color is too faded, hard to read. Some cool artwork going on, but I just wish they made everything a bit brighter so you could actually see and read it. And the same with the disc, probably can't see that. Oh yeah, just slightly. But yeah, as I mentioned, it's ultimately the music that counts. And um, this album certainly delivers. So another fantastic album by Medieval Demon. This is Arcadian Witchcraft. And yes, as I said, I will link up the videos where I've described these previous albums as well in, on earlier occasions. But all I will say is this, honestly, my recommendation, you should definitely check out this band if you like Greek black metal or just atmospheric black metal in general. I think Medieval Demon are simply astonishing and empowering. So go check them out. All right, so up next, just consulting my notes, we have yet another Greek black metal album and this is a classic in the genre, none other than Necromantia with Crossing the Fiery Path. So yeah, this is considered one of the legendary releases within the Greek scene. And uh, one of the earlier early ones, it came out in the 90s. So it's sort of one of those staple albums for the Hellenic scene. Um, this is quite funny. When I first heard this album, I thought, yeah, it gets, off, it gets off to a really strong start, but then it disappoints. But then I subsequently realized that you really just need to sit down and properly listen to this album to, to take it all in. And when I did, I realized it's a masterpiece, essentially. So yeah, if you're not familiar, Necro Necromantia are a unique band because they're, they're famous for using two bass guitars and no guitar. So it's just two, two basses distorted to the max and um, some keyboards and some atmospheric moments, but I'll get into the details of that as I describe this album. So yeah, uh, track one, it's called uh, The Vampire Lord Speaks. Yeah, that is a sp that opening track consists of some spoken words over some really haunting build-up and majestic keyboards culminating in an evil laugh as the strong string synths continue. This is brilliant, like it's so theatrical with that evil laugh and the majestic keyboards, it's off, the album is off to a really strong start. Now, um, track two, which is called The Warlock, um, that consists of a lot of bass riffs with massive distortion accompanied by drums, keyboards and raspy vocals. The riffs have various tempos from mid-paced and catchy to fast and blasting, accompanied by synths to lift the atmosphere. So that track is sort of like what you would consider a typical Necromantia track in terms of their sound. So in the respect as described above, this is excellent. It's got um, a haunting, now track two, The Warlock, it's epic, it goes for 13 minutes. It's got a haunting and majestic atmosphere. Um, so it starts off with the, the bass riffs, as I said, followed by a brilliant melodic guitar solo. So they do use guitars for the solos. And then it goes back to some mid-paced catchy riffs. The bass melodies and playing are simply brilliant. Some spoken words are also thrown in above the raspy vocals for added atmosphere and drama, I guess. And, and then it goes into an interesting, sorry, into an atmospheric dark ambient segment, like which reminds me of being in a forest accompanied by flowing rivers, something like that. Um, there, so there are, there's some really dark, uh, minimalist dark ambient 
moments with some snarly vocals and then suddenly some shocking evil synths accompanied by screams and laughter burst in so it's truly evil and dark and then it's back into the bass bass riffs, blast beats, and majestic dark and haunting keyboards. Then followed by a frenzied bass solo, which starts before a bombastic majestic riff to finish off. So track two, The Warlock, hugely epic with a lot of twists and turns. I've just described a 13 minute song in maybe one minute, but sorry, it may sound like a clunky mess, but there's just so much going on in that song. So it's, I had to capture that in the description. Okay, then we go to track three, um, which, is a somber soft bass track which is very atmospheric it gradually builds with more technicality and speed and there are some haunting synths to end it so that's sort of like a somber interlude before going on to the next track so um track four which is called unchaining the wolf of war that's got a, a chugging bass riff to start it off to start off the song and it's generally upbeat and mid-paced there's loads of bass riffs on that song including some fast ones accompanied by the blast beats this is followed by a slow breakdown with thunderous drums, then majestic keyboards with choral vocals, which sound very trancey in their repetition. Trancey and hypnotic, dark, absolutely brilliant. And this is all topped off with some rallying war speech lyrics and vocals. So fantastic track for that one, Unchaining the Wolf of War. Um, then track five which has a French title. That's a short track consisting of some choral vocals, which re remind me a bit of Gregorian chants, which I actually enjoy because it's great for a soaring atmosphere. And then we go into track six, which is called entitled Lord of the Abyss. This is probably my favorite song on the album. This starts with such a gro groovy, plodding, slow riff, which is so hypnotic and lifted by majestic and haunting synths. Is this the best riff on, riff on the album? Possibly. Then this is followed by a spoken word passage, which sounds very grandiose. The middle of the track features some fast bass melodies and also some string instruments, galloping riffs and raspy vocals. It then launches into a galloping segment with an evil laugh. There are some really interesting synth and keyboard sounds on this song um, on multiple occasions. One of them actually reminds me of the synth track by Horner, um, Auto Regnum Satanus, or the outro to that song, which sounds really haunting and disturbing, fantastic. And then, um, the song is topped off with a blistering melodic guitar solo accompanied by some frantic sounding drums at the end. It's incredibly catchy, anthemic and powerful with loads of twists and turns again. So that's probably my favorite track, track six, Lord of the Abyss. Then track seven, which is called Tribes of the Moon. That's got some uh, like minimalist plodding gallop. It's a mi minimalist plodding galloping bass track accompanied by raspy vocals. There are some bass harmonies and more, beneath, more majestic keyboards. The track ends with some dreamy minimalist piano synths before plotting bass riffs and a guitar solo. And then this is all followed up with some majestic and choral keyboards. So again, a fantastic track. And the outro track eight, which is untitled, this is an ominous and haunting piano track accompanied by string keyboards and um, some dark ambient moments and more spoken word pas passages. Um, one of the atmospheres on it is quite somber, almost sad actually, with loads of piano and synth variation and experimentation, but it always sounds really dark and eerie. So fantastic closing track. So sorry guys if my description of this album was overly detailed, but I just feel there's so many little elements and nuances to pick up on. There's so much in this album, but it's absolutely fantastic. Great, grandiose, haunting, majestic atmosphere. So brilliant stuff. Okay, so just looking at the cover art there, I think some people would say this is really kitschy or cheesy maybe, but in my opinion, that is awesome. You know, like the Count Dracula or the vampire with the cape, the moon, the bats and the wolves. Absolutely brilliant. I love that kind of stuff. Unfortunately, the lyric sheet is fucking unreadable due to crappy print and then they've superimposed newspaper articles over the back, making it doubly hard to read. But again, it's ultimately about the music. There's the disc there. All right. So yeah, for most of you, this band probably needs no introduction and this is regarded as a classic, but if you haven't checked it out, checked it out, you really should because it's brilliant. One of my favorite releases I've heard this year, even though it's an old album, but you know, finally catching up. The other album by them, which is also a cult classic, is Scarlet Evil Witch in Black, which recently celebrated its 27th anniversary. Ken from Ken's Death Metal Crypt gave me a tape copy of that ages ago. I want to get the original as well. But in the meantime, check this out if you haven't. 
that's Necromantia with Crossing the Fiery Path, a Greek metal, Greek black metal classic. All right. So the first three albums I've shown today, all Greek black metal bands. We're still staying on the black metal topic, but now we're going over to Poland. This is Graveland with the Fire of Awakening. So most of you will probably be familiar with Graveland as well, a largely in the studio, one man black metal project from uh, Rob, Rob Darkin. And uh, I've also referred to this band, I think in threads, I've never actually spoken about their albums in detail, but um, this is not a typical black metal band. It's very majestic and powerful. Some of you might know there was a slight change in sound, like the early albums are quite um, raw, you know, albums like Thousand Swords, A Celtic Winter, Carpathian Wolves, which are great albums, but then he went in a more epic direction with the album Creed of Iron, which in my opinion is in my top five black metal albums of all time. It's absolutely a masterpiece. Then he continued in the same vein. So with these subsequent albums, it's very similar. So I'll just say in a nutshell, if you like Graveland's Creed of Iron, you will like this too. Um, if, if you're not familiar, Graveland has that kind of sound where um, the riffs are not typical black metal. They're sort of marching hypnotic riffs, which are simplistic, but very sort of driving and pump you up, accompanied by some snarly vocals, thunderous pagan drumming, like war rhythms almost, um, usually to the backdrop of soaring, grandiose, powerful choral keyboards, which remind me very much of the atmosphere invoked in the, by the Conan the Barbarian soundtrack. So yeah, it, it has a very Conan the Barbarian atmosphere based on that soundtrack. So if you love that kind of stuff, check this band out. So um, I would describe this music actually when I listen to it because it's so soaring and powerful. It's good go to war music. It gets you pumped. Like I imagine in medieval times, if they had PAs and sound systems, if you cranked this over a battlefield, it would be the perfect atmosphere for marching into battle. So yeah, Graveland Fire of Awakening. So as I said, this is very similar to Creed of Iron. It's, if you haven't heard that album, just go and listen to it. Same with this one. But um, yeah, track one, which is entitled We Shall Prevail. That's got some awesome, awesome marching riffs accompanied by majestic choral synths, which are incredibly powerful. The fast riff is driving. It includes the usual melodic segments and building dramatic melodies. So business as usual. Then we go into track two, Battle of Vortan's Wolves. This is probably my favorite track on the album. A sick riff kicks this song off. It's almost catchy and groovy. In addition to the pagan riffs when the vocals uh, kick in, there are no keyboards for a long time on this song. So um, until the climax of the song when the soaring choral keyboards kick in. So that's another point. He uses a lot of keyboards to lift the atmosphere, but he doesn't rely on using them all the time. He doesn't drown all the guitars in the synths. Then we go to track three, which is entitled In the Sea of Blood. That's got a driving synth tone and triumphant marching riff. Track four, Die for Freedom. That's got an awesome haunting synth riff. Great guitar melody, fantastic grandiose rallying war synth and vocals in the middle. Another brilliant song. And then track five entitled The Four Wings of the Sun. The synths and the riffs convey a very emotional feeling of victory, I think. And then the, then there's this hypnotic marching riff, which, which keeps building um, until the guitar melodies gradually creep in. The dark, dark synths follow and massive majestic synth line uh, really accompanies that. And then it just conjures these really powerful images like the skies or the heavens opening, something like that. And this is accentuated by the timpani, the kettle drums and synths. So, this is pagan black metal, which sounds very majestic with a lot of keyboards, as I said, with a lot of classical flourishes. And if you like Conan the Barbarian, you will love this. So with this one, I, I really like Creed of Iron. That's one of my favorites. And I heard this and I think it's just as good, if not better. So you won't be disappointed. Okay, so first of all, cover art is pretty cool. Then we've got lyrics here, which again are superimposed over this sort of white cloudy print. So it's hard to read but very cool artistic layout. Yeah. And the disc is just black, so I won't show you that. Nothing to see on there. Yep, just plain black disc. Yep, but if you haven't heard this band, again, I implore you, if you like uh, majestic or atmospheric black metal, you will absolutely love this. By the way, I saw this band at Steel Fest this year, and they were hands down my favorite band. Just so powerful they used all the keyboards in the live setting and they had 
live session mu musicians, you know, like people pounding on pagan drums and getting the audience to clap along. So it really is, I never thought this, but it's actually really good live music as well. And it really lifts the atmosphere of the place. So yeah, another brilliant album by Graveland. This is Fire of Awakening. All right, guys, and that's it for this update. So four CDs, which I've talked about. Sorry if I went into excessive detail, but I just feel so passionate about some of these albums that I couldn't neglect it. I had to actually describe what's in there. But ultimately, you will see how brilliant they are when you go and listen to them for yourselves. So I'll leave it there and hope you enjoy your listen of these albums. So um, I'll be back again soon, I hope. I'm trying to keep up the momentum now and I'm glad that I'm back. So. I've still got a lot of music coming in, so there'll be another update soon, I'm sure. So stay tuned for that. And as usual, thanks very much everyone for your support of the channel and I hope you continue to watch. So that's it for today, guys. In the meantime, take care and I'll talk to you soon. See ya.